It is finally here. Got delivered this morning. The Suron Ultra B, the most difficult, rarest, most sought after electric bike in the United States right now. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. These things are basically impossible to find at the moment. There's a few places where you can order them and the, the wait is between one to three months. I bought this on March 3rd. It arrived yesterday morning and I didn't have time to unbox it. So today is the following day. It is 85 degrees out here and we are going to open it up uh, and see what's inside. And then we're gonna put it together. As of this month, it has been one year since I got my Suron Light BX and once I got that, it just changed the way I think about bikes and electric bikes. Before that bike, I thought electric bikes were just like not that cool. Honestly, it just wasn't something I was interested in whatsoever. And Suron changed that completely. So when they announced the Ultra B, of course I wanted one. It was really hard to find a place to buy this bike and get it in a reasonable amount of time. But we were able to make it work. I'm gonna be sweating this whole time. It's real hot out here. But uh, without further ado, we're just gonna start opening it up and see what's inside. I know the first question most people are gonna have is what vendor did you use? I got it on Alibaba. We'll talk about that in a bit. First, let's just get this box open. So of course I've seen some other unboxes on YouTube. It comes in this metal frame. And I think this box comes up. So I'm gonna put the camera down and try and get this initial box off. There we go. So let's take a quick look. First off, this is one thing you gotta deal with if you get an import model Ultra B. This is the transformer, so we'll explain this in a second. Just gonna put everything to the side. Here is the bike. Wow, look at that, our first look. Interesting. Uh, Dude, for a second, I thought this was the handlebars. I thought it like connected in some weird way, but that's just part of the packaging. Looks like that's where they keep the brakes. So this is gonna be a process to say the least. Okay, next off, let's get this plastic cover off and then start taking all these extra little boxes out. And then we're gonna start making some progress. Lots of packaging here. So while I'm undoing this package, let me talk about the process of buying it. Anyone who's ever bought anything on Alibaba knows, the helicopter going over, uh, it gets a lot more flack than um, it maybe deserves. I mean, there's definitely places you can get ripped off easily on Alibaba, but I have been shopping on Alibaba for various things since 2017. And there's a few ways to pretty much guarantee you'll get your money back if you get ripped off at any time. And that is, by using a credit card from a bank that you trust and by keeping all payments within Alibaba. The second you try and initiate a wire transfer outside of the website or anything like that, you're no longer protected by Alibaba and your money is as good as gone. So keep that in mind. Now, there's definitely a lot of people who are watching this and probably already know where I got it from. There's only a two, as far as I know, vendors on Alibaba where you can reliably buy Surans. And as far as I know, it's the same place. If you wanna try and figure it out yourself, Go ahead and do your own research. But by the time you watch this, you're most likely gonna be able to just buy one from a United States distributor and it'll be much easier than the process that I'm going through. So uh, keep that in mind. Anyways, we just got more packaging. We're trying to get through all of it just so we can show the bike. Looks like we got the handlebars here just kind of dangling. Big piece of cardboard right here. Let's see if we can just pull this out. It's gonna be a nightmare to get rid of all this packaging. Ugh. We have almost got the bike uncovered though. This is most likely the action. I don't know, it's probably like tools or something. There's no charger in there. This is probably the charger. So much packaging. All these little boxes, we're gonna see what all these are in just a second. Very cool, very cool. Okay, I'm very anxious to get all this packaging off and actually see how the bike looks. Another thing that's pretty cool is that in the import model, it comes with pegs for a passenger, which I'm sure you can remove really easily, but as far as I know, in the USA model, you don't get these. So it's cool just to have them and be able to take them off uh, instead of not having them in the first place. I'm sure you'd be able to buy them separately once the bike's more available, but here you just get them. Yeah, I believe like in China, these are sold. First off, they're much cheaper if you buy one in China. And it's, mu it's seen much more as like a, a commuter device. So you, you use it to get back and forth from work, on the roads, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, that's not really the case with me. I don't really commute anywhere on a motorcycle. <laughs> I never have and I never will, so it's not really something I'm looking forward to doing. 
Anyways, we're gonna get through a little bit more packaging. Let's go ahead and start doing the seats. I mean, the first thing you notice, I know it's hard to tell from video, is that the size is significantly bigger than my light B. So here on the rear end, it, there is a tail light and two turn signals. So we'll show all this off in a second, but I do believe this is also something that does not come on the USA model. This is an import model thing only. This uh, part that sticks out, looks like you can remove it right here if you don't want it. I guess we'll figure that out. But uh, I mean, for my purposes, I might, I'll probably keep it on. It does look a little weird. It extends out just a bit. It looked worse in the pictures, I'll say that. I thought it was like, like it was somewhere like more out here. It's really compact, like right here, this is probably like three and a half, four inches sticking out from the rear fender. So for anyone who was wondering, in person, I don't think it looks that bad, but you know, everybody's opinions will differ. Let's go ahead and get this box out. This has got to be the charger. Ugh. I don't even think we can get it out right now. It's wedged in perfectly between this frame and the wheel. Oh my God. Okay, we're starting to see something happen. A little bit more bubble wrap and we're gonna be able to see the bike itself, which is awesome. I think this is the last part. This cover over the seat. Now this is already, looks like it's very, oh, okay. No, I got it. I was about to say, it looks like it's gonna rip and leave. Oh yeah, it is. I don't know if this is a pet peeve for you guys, but when you take off something that's plastic and it leaves little bits inside, uh, it drives me crazy on a brand new thing. Looks like we're able to get most of it off. It's like a rubber band that's holding this in. As far as I know, this seat comes off and this is like a storage area. So I'm gonna be showing that in a little bit, but right now I just wanna get to look at the bike. <laughs> I just wanna see how it looks. There we go. Oh, I think we're good. It's just one part right here that's like not cooperating. That's gonna snap and hurt my fingers. I could already see it. <laughs> but there we kind of have it. This is almost it. Let's go ahead and uncover the front wheel just so we can get a good shot of it. So here it is. This is the Suron Ultra B. So let me give you guys a couple of quick Heads up impressions from what I see and what I thought, because obviously I've been obsessing over this thing nonstop since I ordered it and I've been waiting for it to get here. The tires are much more impressive than I thought. From all the pictures I've seen, they didn't look that much more substantial than the ones that come on the Light BX. These are definitely better. They're not great. I mean, just from looking at it, the tread pattern looks decent and I can't really tell how much they weigh obviously, but they are big. They're big and that means that they have decent traction or at least better than uh, what you get on a Surround Light BX. Obviously, I would hope that. Disc brakes, massive. Actual dirt bike brakes, it looks like they put on there. Way bigger brakes than you get on a Light B. Battery, way bigger looking than I thought. I did not think it was gonna look this large. It's probably still hard to tell on video. Battery is big. It's more wide than it is tall, if that makes sense. I thought it was gonna be like about this tall, but it's about the same height is the Light B battery, but it's about, I wanna say a third wider. That makes sense. Much thicker chain, much thicker sprocket. KKE suspension, everyone says the suspension is great, so I guess we'll test that at some point when we're out riding. Other than that, the look of the bike is just, it has way more presence than a Light B, it is, it's big. I don't think you're gonna be able to get away with this thing riding it around like uh, you would a Light B. It is substantially larger, so. I think any cop is gonna look at this and be like, dirt bike, as opposed to a light B where you look at it and you're like, what is that? Like kind of like a weird mountain bike with a throttle. Uh, this thing's big. So anyways, this is it uncovered. Let's take a look at what's in these boxes. First box, let's take a look. Sounds like tools, a bunch of documentation. Let's see what's in here. I believe this is a diagnostic tool, if I'm not mistaken some type of mount for something and some documentation in Mandarin. So not of much use to me what's in that box. So here's the thing that nobody is excited about when they get their import model is the transformer. So this pretty much reduces your ability to take the charger with you until they come out with the USA charger for sale standalone, which I'm sure will happen this year. But even if it doesn't, I don't really take my charger with me, but anyways, you have to use this gigantic trans transformer thing to charge it in a USA wall outlet. So this goes into your wall, your regular wall outlet, like in your house. And then the charger plugs into this because it's an EU style charger. I don't know if it's China style or uh, European Union style, but 
I guess that's what we're gonna find out when we open this, which is most likely the charger. And I am correct, much bigger charger. This is the charger you're gonna, you're gonna get when you buy a USA style one. Much nicer than the Light B charger. A little bit bigger, larger fan. But as you can see, it's got this style plug, which I don't even know what type of wall that goes into. And then this that goes into the Suron. So basically you plug this into your Suron battery and then this goes into this and then it goes into that and then this goes into your wall. And then that's how you're gonna charge your bike if you buy one that's import. I gotta put a hat on, man, I'm sweating. Okay, now we are going to take our socket to all of these little nuts screws that are, I think, holding this frame together because without taking this frame apart, you can't actually do anything with the bike. So we're going to take all these metal pieces off. Then the bike will be uncovered. It looks like it's held up by these straps. So we should be able to take the frame off without the bike toppling over. And uh, then we can put the handlebars on. And it looks like that may be the only thing you have to install, honestly. I don't know what this is. I'm not sure what this is. This was just hanging off the seat. Looks like it's there on both sides. So it's probably nothing major. Uh, so next we're going to do that. We're gonna take off all these bolts to remove this frame, put on the handlebars. Looks like this is the throttle and some other elements. Also, I opened this white box. It was just two rear view mirrors, which are huge. Uh, so yeah, that's what's, what was in the white box. As you can see, this is designed as a bike that you ride on the road in China, to be specific, in China. It is, although it comes with everything to make it street legal, I don't know if it is or not, so don't take my word for it in this video. Just gonna speed all this up, so yeah. Keep in mind, this metal is really sharp, so if you ever, if you get one and it comes packaged like this, be careful, because I've almost cut myself twice. These edges are really sharp, and they will hurt you if you run into it. Just a warning. We don't really need to take apart the entire frame, to, uh, to get the bike out of the packaging. But uh, the, these handlebar bits, these are just the brakes. They're attached to the frame in a sense. So we're gonna keep this top part on. Pretty much all we have to do is put together the top end, which is not gonna be difficult, thankfully. Hopefully, I guess we'll find out. Uh, stay tuned. Okay, I was wrong. You do at least have to fully remove the top part of this frame in order to put the bars on. So as you can see, you need to first put on the bars and the brakes. So let me try and do this with one hand. Hey, yo, it's not all we do with one hand out here. So bars are gonna go on like this, boom. And then the brakes come on this little piece of the packaging. You just have to take off these two nuts and then put it right there. And it comes with hand guards, like for off-road riding, for serious off-road riding, which is really cool. Uh, I don't know where the mirrors go, but I guess we'll probably find that out. But it's getting late in the day, so we're just going to start uh, knocking this out. I'm going to try and get these bars on and then get the brakes. We've got this little wire that goes, I assume, to the other side. So it's time to just start getting things done. So hopefully when I'm finished, next shot is going to be the cockpit assembled. And um, we'll be able to get it off of this and hopefully give it our first spin around the block. I don't know if the battery's charged or what. Whew, I'm tired. But uh, we're going... We're getting it done, we're doing it. I take it you have to put on the throttle. This tells you what drive mode you're in before you put the stem on. So we're gonna do that. Folks, after a quick trial and error and a cut, could've been worse though, it's okay. That metal is sharp, I tried to tell you guys. I did, couldn't even warn myself apparently because <laughs> it got me. It's just a tiny little baby cut though, none of Band-Aid could fix. Anyways, we got our cockpit assembled. I just kind of did it based off of what I thought it's supposed to look like. I don't know if I did this side correctly. This side lines up perfectly. It's kind of like you could easily tell how it's supposed to go on this side, but here, I don't know. I got like a little gap right here because there's this button that if you go any closer, it's gonna go up against that. And then this, you know, but it seems fine. So uh, this is how it looks when it's done. This is the complete product. So now the moment of truth, let's grab one of these keys. I find it funny how the bike is so much more substantial in every way, but you still have the same dinky little Suron keys. Would have liked to see an upgrade here. Now let's figure out where it goes. Uh, oh, it goes up here. I don't know if obviously the bike shouldn't be on. Breaker's off. Okay, so now we get to figure out how to access the battery to turn on the breaker. We got so much going on here. This, I, I guess I'm gonna take this to the metal recycling center or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Let's see, I believe from this side, the key right here, 
and turn it to the right. Boom. And then something unlocks and then you lift up the rear and you kind of gently start pulling it back. And then it unhooks from that thing right there. Seats off. Under the seat, you have storage, which is insane. This is a lot more storage than I thought. Looks like it might get warm, whatever you keep there. So I don't know if I keep my GoPro or maybe stuff an entire hoodie there. I don't know, sky's the limit. You also have something right here. This feels like some tools. We're gonna leave that alone for now. Anyways, release the battery and then you kind of just push it forward. I don't really know how to describe it, but then boom, battery's up. As you can see, it already shows me the amount of juice. So I take it, we just have to plug it in. I don't see a breaker that you kind of switch. I think you just straight up plug it in. All right, well, thanks to the power of YouTube, I see. So this one goes in first, this one second, apparently. I don't see a breaker. So from here, before we put the seat back on, let's lower this, grab the key, and see if it powers on. And it does. There we go. Looks like the turn signal's on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at the turn signals go. That's pretty neat. That's cool. I can't lie. That's really cool. So you got that. Anyways. We are done. Let's go ahead and put this back together and then I'm gonna take it off and give you guys a shot. It's already about to be nighttime, so. All right, folks, and there we have it. Our basically assembled Suron Ultra B. So easy, I was able to do it. And I've never worked on a dirt bike in my life. I've worked on bikes, but I mean, it's really just the front end, which is simple enough. I'm gonna to have to look at some videos to see if I did this correctly. But if anything, everything's tight. I can guarantee that. And uh, you don't really have to do anything to the rear end. We're just going to take off these hitch straps and uh, then the bike is ready to ride. By the way, this is what it looks like when you buy an Ultra B and you get it delivered in the box like so. And yeah, that's about it. Any questions you guys have, leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.